In this lesson, we're going to cover the flange tool. The file that we have open is smplate.ipt, and it can be found in your Chapter 10 exercise folder. What we're going to do is we're going to start off by creating some simple flanges. So I'm just going to go ahead and select on the flange tool from the Sheet Metal Features panel. And what we can do here in the dialog box is we're going to start off just by selecting individual edges. So as you see, I can go back and select them individually. So if I only wanted to do those three, I can go ahead and do that. Now at this point, I can go back and determine the flange angle. So let's see what it looks like at 120. Probably not exactly what I want in this case. So I'm going to change that back to 90. The bend radius. Again, this information is coming from the sheet metal style. So I'm going to keep the defaults there. For the height datum, and the bend position, this is all going to control where the height of this flange is going to be determined and also where the bend is going to be coming. For more information, refer back to the help. And in the help system, let me open it back up here. And in the help system, there's very good images showing exactly what's going to happen. So under the height datum option here, you can see exactly what's happening with the outer face, how it's going to be measured versus the interface option and the parallel to flange, and aligned versus orthogonal. As well with the bend position options here, you can see exactly what's going to be happening with those bends with the different options that we have. So if you want more detail on that, just go ahead and click on the question mark on the lower left hand side of the dialog box, and you can get more information in regards to how these datums work. So I'm going to go ahead and click on apply, and you see that our flange has occurred inside the browser even though we selected on all three edges they're being encompassed in a single feature so what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo that and I want to show one more option with the flange tool so again I'll select on flange and in this case if I want to select all four edges there's an option here called loop select so I'm going to zoom up on this as I move my cursor back over the top you can see that it's selecting the given face. So in this case, I'm going to select the top edge. And you can see all four edges are selected. I can go ahead and click OK. And again, a single flange has been created with a bend underneath each one of those for each of the intersections. So let's go ahead and explore a couple other options with the flange tool. So you'll notice when I selected the edge, it did the entire length of the edge. That may not always be the case. We may want to come back in a specific value from a given edge, or I just want to determine the width, or I want it to have it centered. So I'm going to start off by determining which edge I want to have that come back in from. And I can go back, I can switch that by the way, by clicking on the flip direction option. Do I want it to go inside or outside? In this case, I'll have it go to the outside. But now if I go back and expand the dialog, you'll see that we have a couple different options down at the bottom here for the type. So the default is edge, meaning that it's going to go the entire length of the edge. I have a width option. I have two options underneath the width, centered. And now at this point I can go back and determine I want the width to be, let's say, 30. And my flange is now 30 millimeters, and it's centered. So next I'm just going to zoom up here a little bit off this closest edge here and let's change the option to offset now with the offset I can go back I can select a specific point that I want that offset distance to be measured from so right now I'm at five millimeters let's change that to 15 and you will see I'm now coming off 15 millimeters off that selected edge and it's 30 millimeters in width so I could go back and change that to 20 and the width gets changed back to 20 Let's take a look at the offset option. Now for the offset option, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select two points. So the first point is 15 millimeters off the selected point that we've already done in the previous example. So now what I'm going to do for offset number two, you'll see that the arrow is red. I'm going to come back and pick a point on the opposite face. And here again, I can go back and say, how much distance do I want? So if I change that to 20, I now have it coming off 20 millimeters off that edge. And these are parametric, so if the model does change, it will maintain these values. The last option here is from two. And before I go back and do that, let's go back and click on OK here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to place in a couple work planes. And I want to create another flange off of here. 
So from the sheet metal features, I'm going to scroll on down, I'm going to select a work plane, and let's place in a couple different work planes. The first one, let's go back and do an offset, and I'm going to place it in at negative 5. So what I'm going to do next is I'm just going to back off here a little bit. So next I want to create a work plane that's going to go right in the middle. So again, I'm going to start the work plane tool. I'm going to select the first parallel plane. We'll slide on to the back. Select the second parallel plane. And I now have two work planes. So let's again go back and start the flange tool. I'm going to select an edge. In this case, we'll come back out. And let's place this in at an angle of 120. We'll have it go down a little bit. And then again, we'll expand the dialog box. And for the type, I'm going to change this to from to. Let me just move the dialog box a little bit out of the way, pan this over. So you notice it's asking me again to select a couple planes. So I'm going to select the first work plane, the second work plane. Go ahead, click OK. And everything has been created. So now let's go back and test this out. If I go back and expand the face that the original feature was based on, and let's change that 40 to 70 and return. You'll see that the work plane was updated. It's still centered right in between the two parallel planes. And our distance value has come back in here as shown. One more option that I want to show with the flange tool. I'm going to spin around to the opposite face here. Let's place in one more flange. I'm going to come back off of this edge and expand the dialog box. And I'm going to do an offset. So off that first one, I'm going to come back in two millimeters off each edge. As shown here. So if I go ahead and click OK, you'll see that Inventor went and placed in the cutout for me here. So what I want to do is let's go back and I want to edit this one more time. So I'm just going to double click on flange 4, expand the dialog, and I'm going to place the value in at a half millimeter for this left side. So if I go ahead and click on OK, You'll notice that Inventor went and cut off that back side here. And the reason that that is that there's a option here for the minimum remnant. So if I go back and click on the Bend tab, on the right-hand side, you'll see where it says Minimum Remnant. And right now, that's an option that's being set in the style. So if I go ahead and click OK here and go back to the Sheet Metal Styles, under the Bend tab, you'll see that we have minimum remnant right now at thickness times 2. So our thickness right now is at a half millimeter. So let's close this out. So if my distance is 1 millimeter or less, Inventor is going to go ahead and cut that off. Otherwise, it would probably just get broke somewhere in the manufacturing cycle. So just like I was showing before, you can always go back and edit any one of these. So right now I'm at 120 degrees. Let's go back and change that back to 90. And now that the angle is set to 90, go ahead and click on OK. And you can continue placing on flanges and other features as needed to complete your part.